What he has captured on tape, we feel is authentic. This time on Unexplained Mysteries, UFO, best evidence. You'll hear the best evidence that UFOs exist from real eyewitnesses. In the sky was a great uh, golden globe. That was a ship as big as my house. We'll probe the famous crash of an alleged alien spacecraft at Roswell. The creatures were laying like this, side by side. The live one was, was over here. And we'll show you what happened to the wreckage and the victims of the crash. He said, we have the bodies of the crash. Alien bodies are still here on this base. You'll hear UFO evidence from the military itself. Actual ground-to-air transmissions. Edward, you still have any of these uh, UFOs in sight? Yes? No way he could have caught it. The unknown object witnessed throughout the western United States. It was a bright light that lit up the entire sky. When he got home, he looked like he had seen a ghost. The unidentified intruder that flew into military airspace. This craft shows up. Uh, that's scary. We'll show the new sightings of rarely seen daytime UFOs. And they said, come out to meet with his UFOs out here. And you'll get the most convincing testimony yet. Our exclusive interview with a former astronaut. They saw put down three little landing gear and landed right out on the dry lake. And we'll give you the final lowdown in our Unex report. It's all here on Unexplained Mysteries. UFO, best evidence. Nowhere in the world is safe from UFOs. Brantford, Connecticut. Tucson, Arizona. Topeka, Kansas. Gulf Breeze, Florida, Kanazawa, Japan, Ontario, Canada, UFOs captured on tape. It was a ship as big as my house. It was a total feeling of awe and knowing that I was looking at something that I didn't know what it was. I think there's no doubt about the fact that it's the most dramatic thing and the most astounding thing, the most important thing that could happen here on Earth. Branford, Connecticut. George Bennett was taping an ordinary football game, but when he focused on the sunset, he recorded something not just beautiful, but extraordinary. Bellevue, Wisconsin. TV cameraman Dave Hooker was shooting a feature about a farm. When the tape was played back, it revealed more than just a windmill. Here you can see an object moving behind a windmill here right there it disappears into a cloud just before it goes behind this windmill clouds that day were at 25,000 feet cirrus clouds you know where the camera was put you know the distance to the windmill you can determine its size by looking at the image size here go through some trigonometry and you'll find out that that ufo was about 10 miles away up at 25,000 feet and the size works out to about 500 feet long and doing 14,000 miles an hour which is, again, nothing that a conventional aircraft is capable of doing. Gulf Breeze, a quiet seaside town in Florida. A place with an alarming number of sightings. Let it go! Go back, it's right there! We had it drop these little objects out, and they would go out at an angle from the red object we were looking at, stop and turn red, and we would have two red objects sitting there. It gives you the impression of sometimes of, of fireworks. Sometimes it looks like a string coming out with a white ball on the end of it. Kanazawa, Japan. This is tape of an extremely rare incident. A daytime UFO. The object descends, then accelerates away. Watch carefully. The camera zooms in. Check out the shape of the craft. It's the classic shape of a flying saucer. Carp Ontario. Another disc. Much closer. And this time, on the ground. The object was photographed behind this house. On my property, I've seen lots of bright flames that were not like 
spreading fires. There were more individual flames going extremely high and a lot, a lot of smoke. I saw this bright, bright light. Right on top of it was like a beak, and it was blue light pulsing, and it had a, um, a light right on the bottom and a light right in the middle of it. And I seen a ship just coming down over the tree and going very closer to the flames. That night was a very traumatic night for me. I can always, always remember that night. It will never be forgotten. I looked out the back window, and, and in the sky was a great uh, golden globe with a thin um, red rim. The only thing that came to mind quickly was that it was lightning, but I'd never seen lightning in a circular form. There was uh, one specific area, a uh, circular pattern really, where all of the plant life had uh, been exposed to some form of radiation. And by that I mean it just kind of melted. Real healthy bushes just melted to the ground. You can see some indication that there's a, a solid craft there that you can see the top of and also see something underneath. But there at least there is the hint of a cylindrical object here. It was a ship. It was a ship as big as my house. Real eyewitness evidence. But studies prove that eyewitnesses are not always reliable. It gets to the point when you have 40,000 reports of UFOs per year, of which about a quarter of them are, aren't easily explainable, to, to assume that all of those are misidentifications, frauds, hoaxes, uh, secret aircraft just doesn't add up. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, the Roswell UFO crash. We just don't have the technology to produce material like I brought in from that ranch. The eyewitness who says he came face to face with an alien. My dad was kind of oh, right about here. And he was talking to this creature. The extraterrestrial autopsies at a top secret base. One of the most interesting discoveries, I think, has to be the alleged alien jawbone that we uncovered. The military's own evidence of UFOs. Radar tracks unknown objects. That's those three little dots out there, and I'll say that uh, there are three definite objects. I know it was not an aircraft. I know it was not a helicopter. I know it was not a weather. The strange moving light that was seen over large parts of the U.S. The object uh, was tracked on radar, both surveillance radars and height finding radars. The craft that somehow intruded into secure military airspace. It seemed to move in whichever direction it wanted to go whenever it wanted to contrary to any aircraft that I've seen in the past. Footage of rare daytime UFOs. Every time we get a new tape and we find some new kind of object in there, there's an excitement that builds, and it's just like incredible. And the astonishing UFO sighting by an American hero. Because they were flying quite high. How high, we couldn't tell. Because we couldn't get anywhere near their altitude. All this amazing testimony, plus the ultimate UFO summary in our Onyx Report, coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, the best evidence of UFOs, physical contact. Roswell, New Mexico. Local headlines announced shocking news. The Army Air Force reported they had captured a flying saucer. Debris was found on a nearby ranch in Corona. This building here, uh, building number 84, is a building, I believe, that they brought materials from the Corona crash and stored them in here temporarily. Major Jesse Marcel Sr., the base's chief intelligence officer, recovered the wreckage and took it to headquarters. But when papers published the news of the UFO crash, the military changed its story. By the time the B-29 with Jesse Marcel and some of the wreckage got to the headquarters two hours after they left in Fort Worth, Texas, the fix was already in to kill the story. The second press release stated the wreckage came from a weather balloon. Somehow, one of the most significant UFO sightings 
became an ordinary weather balloon. Some experts feel Brigadier General Roger Ramey, the base commander, ordered a massive cover-up. And what he did was arrange for the wreckage of a weather balloon, the radar reflector on a weather balloon. Right before Marcel died, he allegedly told Walter Hout the truth. The weather balloon story was a lie. An alien spacecraft really did crash near Roswell. He made statements to the effect that it was nothing of this world. It couldn't be bent, torn, cut, uh, pierced, <laughs> burned. Uh, he went through a whole list of them. He said, we just don't have the technology to produce material like I brought in from that ranch. And some UFO experts maintain that a mid-air collision caused a second crash that day, 200 miles from Roswell. When I first came up to the, the craft, the creatures were laying like this in a line, side by side. And the live one was was over here. When he was five years old, Gerald Anderson says he came face to face with an extraterrestrial. And my dad was kind of all right about here. And he was sitting like this. My Uncle Ted was standing more over here, kind of leaned over like this, and we're talking to this creature. He describes the aliens as four feet tall, with gray skin, large eyes, and thin arms. Two of them were dead. One was dying. But one was still alive, trying to communicate. And just suddenly he turned and he looked at me. And when that happened, all kinds of things just started happening inside my head. I, I, I started getting sensations of tumbling and falling and an awful loneliness, like there was no way he could possibly get back to where he came from. Witnesses say the military soon showed up and threatened any civilian who went public with the amazing story. But now, many of them are speaking out. We have testimony from over 200 people concerned with these events, people who handled the wreckage, people who described the bodies, people who were, had direct orders, military orders, to do this, that, or the other thing. We have consistent testimony that in a court of law would convict anybody of a crime. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, where ufologists believe the military took the Roswell crash debris. Well, recently we investigated the rumors about Hangar 18 and in particular the Roswell connection to, to Wright-Pat. The military claimed they brought a crashed weather balloon to Wright-Patterson. What happened to it? We couldn't find any record of that. We found that was sort of interesting. Experts maintained that the crash wreckage was stored in the base's secret tunnels. The exact spot where Officer Jack Donahoe claimed he saw an alien autopsy. My Uncle Jack had a top secret security clearance uh, when he worked at Wright Patterson the complete time. The strangest story that he ever accounted to me uh, was the day that he asked me if I had heard of a UFO crash out in Phoenix, Arizona. He said, we have the bodies from the crash. Donahoe allegedly went to a secret room where a scientist was working on a dead body. It wasn't human. There was a stainless steel table in this room that was arranged a little bit like a laboratory. The man said, look at this. Jack looked at the body. Jack told me that at the time they were doing full autopsies on the bodies. The head was shaped basically like a human head, only it was small. Better not spend very much time here, and they left the room. I tried to bring it up at a later date. He said, forget him. Just forget about the whole incident. Well, there are still people that absolutely believe that alien bodies and UFO wreckage are still here on this base, and that the bodies are kept in cryogenic suspension somewhere underneath Wright Field. They had uh, 30 alien bodies underground at Wright-Patterson Field alone. Witnesses state that scientists performed anatomical research on the aliens for years. Officials within the Air Force intelligence community have told me that they had determined back in the 70s, possibly before that, that this was an alien job. I think the Air Force is hiding a lot of things. 
They did issue a statement, though, that there are no aliens or UFO pieces on this base now. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, the military tracks UFOs on radar. Search high, search high. Search very high. No way. No way he could have contacted. Eyewitnesses in Oregon see something incredible in the night sky. The bright light that lit up the entire sky. An unknown object flies over an airbase. The Air Force, if they can't stop UFOs, then they clearly can't do their mission. A cameraman goes public with rare footage of daylight sightings. I've never seen anything like this in my life. An astronaut tells of his encounter with a fleet of UFOs. Yes, they were flying quite high. How high, we couldn't tell because we couldn't get anywhere near their altitude. And we'll clear it all up for you in the Onyx Report. There's more UFO evidence next on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries. UFO, best evidence. Excellent evidence of UFOs comes from a surprising source. Declassified tapes of Air Force transmissions tracking unknown objects. Roger, uh, this is the actual recording of an Edwards Air Force Base radar man who sees strange aircraft on his screen. That's those three little dots out there, and I'll say that uh, there are three definite objects. It is not weather, it's not clutter. Edwards Air Force Base was on alert for any sign of Soviet aircraft or missiles. What they found was startling. Possibly as many as 12 unidentified craft flying very high and very fast. Also on the tapes is proof that the airbase had a UFO officer. Surprising, after years of denying the existence of UFOs. Okay, they finally got that UFO officer at Edwards out of the vet, and uh, he said, yes, he would uh, like to have uh, a look. We're getting plenty of... Uh, I know it was not an aircraft. I know it was not a helicopter. I know it was not a weather balloon. I know a lot of things it was not. It was not anything that we know of as a flying object that could do the maneuvers that this did. And what it was, I do not know. When he saw the objects on his screen, here, he informed his superiors. They immediately ordered an F-106 alert bird to check it out. Edwards, do you still have any of these uh, U-Pops in sight? Yeah. Okay, can I pick out one you want to intercept and we'll take a zero one in on him. But one of the Air Force's most advanced planes could not catch the object. The thing is rising. Uh, tower, how's things look now? Uh, he's low. Look, search high, search high. He does search high. Search very high. Let's the thing take is away. rising. It's rising rapidly. Sorrels watched helplessly as the UFO was getting away. The way it rose, as fast as it went up in altitude, and he passed under to 40,000 feet, not a fur. Not a fur, not a chance. No way he could have caught that. No, we're in as much as dark light as you are. I think the possibility very strongly exists that, yes, there is something beyond uh, what we know. UFO sightings are usually confined to a limited area, but one was reported over several western states, starting in Oregon. That night, we were probably just driving up and down Main Street, which is what we did most And of. we stopped at the east end of the Main Street in Eureka, pulled off the road, and we're sitting there. First thing I remember about the incident was, was the light. light. It was a bright light that lit up the entire sky from horizon to light horizon. Up, that I could see the mountain across the valley and see the trees on that mountain, see the sagebrush, 
The strange light sent out an electromagnetic pulse that switched off the photoelectric cells in the street lights. When he got home, he looked like he had seen a ghost. Betty Robinson's husband, Bob, and his friend were coming home from a hunting trip. They were outside the, the truck, and they could hear this noise. And they stood there for a few seconds and listened. It kept getting louder and louder. And he said it was just a very, very whooshing noise. Just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. But just deafening. They dove under the truck. Then things got really strange. When they got out of the truck, they had left the motor running. And as the object started to approach them, the, the headlights started to dim, and the motor began to sputter. As the object passed over, everything returned to normal. All they wanted to do was hurry up and get home, and get away from it, because they didn't know if it was coming back. The object was tracked moving from Eureka to Reno, Nevada, then south to Las Vegas. Near Nellis Air Force Base, it blew up. More than a 1,000 people witnessed the explosion. Fighters were scrambled from Nellis in Las Vegas, Luke near Phoenix, Arizona. The object uh, was tracked on radar, both surveillance radars and height finding radars. And that's important. It's on two separate kinds of radar, so you don't have weather-related phenomena. You have a real solid object. Randall believes the Air Force tried to turn the Eureka sightings and the Nellis explosion into two different incidents. What really happened was we have a single event that took place over a space of about 16 minutes from the Eureka end of the sightings until it is seen to explode over Las Vegas. Officially, the Air Force claimed the Eureka object was a bolide meteor, and the Nellis explosion was either a U-2 spy plane or a weather balloon. What kind of radar operator couldn't tell the difference between a balloon drifting at the whim of the winds and an intelligently controlled U-2 aircraft. I estimate that this object probably was traveling more than 2,000 miles an hour at times. We can pretty much rule out most existing uh, aircraft and missiles at a time. Why would the Air Force cover this up? The Air Force has been charged with keeping our skies clear of enemy craft. If they can't stop UFOs, then they clearly can't do their mission. I believe it was an object under control intelligent control and just possibly not from around the neighborhood later on unexplained mysteries the intruder at nellis air force base 21.3 degrees 18.5 degrees elevation unknown object p1 control doesn't know what type of aircraft it is either i don't think you'd really see many objects wandering in by accident the rare daylight sightings captured on tape near roswell I got a call and they said, come out to me where there's UFOs out there. What he has captured on tape, we feel is authentic. The famous astronaut who had an extraordinary encounter with a UFO. It was a saucer, came flying over their heads, put down three little landing gear and landed right out on the dry lake there. And we'll condense all the best events into our Onyx report. Coming up right here on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, UFO, Best Evidence. Nellis Air Force Base has been the scene of other credible sightings. What kind of craft could trespass onto a highly secure air base? I don't think you'd really see many objects wandering in by accident. The object seemed to be more advanced than anything in the military's arsenal. This craft shows up, and it's like they're playing with kids. It's like, do whatever they want and buy now. Uh, that's scary. It seemed to move in whichever direction it wanted to go whenever it wanted to contrary to any aircraft that I've seen in the past. In my first look at that tape, I said, wow. And I continue to say, wow. There are only three things that could be on that tape. One is a very elaborate and very expensive hoax. I don't think that's what we're seeing. 
the second is some kind of a black project, a secret project that has some very unusual aerodynamic characteristics. And the third, if you can eliminate all those aerodynamic answers, uh, could be a true unknown. And if that is an unknown, if you can come to that conclusion, you've got a pretty interesting piece of history right there. The video appears to be genuine. Specifically, it was taken by contractor personnel that are operating tracking sites for the United States Air Force. Did the cameras pick up one of the military's black projects, like a stealth bomber? Perhaps a top-secret aircraft reverse-engineered from alien technology. The camera operators and the tracking sites are not exposed to those highly classified aircraft on a typical basis. What's startling about it is that it, it doesn't resemble any shapes that I would know immediately. Um, and that's why I thought it was interesting to start with. It almost appears to be like spherical in the center and with a appendage on the bottom and on the top, you don't see any evidence of rotors. No. The, uh, and also the startling thing is it, it, it seems to change shape. A frame-by-frame -frame analysis reveals the changes the object's shape goes through. The physical profile of the object changes almost frame to frame, and sometimes it appears almost to be a a fuzzy, gassy cloud. In some portions of the video, it appears to be several spherical objects surrounding a dark mass. When something starts to change shape like that in the air, you become very, very uh, puzzled because you realize that you're looking at something that appears to involve a whole new technology that we don't understand. The superior technology intimidates seasoned professionals like uh, us viewing an ant farm. And the ants think they're it. That's the scary part. The first report of UFOs came from Roswell, New Mexico. Unusual craft are still being videotaped there. We began taping UFOs on March 5th. I got a call and they said, come out to Midway, there's UFOs out here. Midway, a short distance from Roswell, UFO experts believe there is a connection between the first crash and today's sightings. New Mexico as a whole has had a lot of sightings. And I think that there is a tremendous interest by our visitors, should we say, as to the activities that have taken place here in the past. We have a piece of film uh, of a jet, I think it was a citation, it flew right over the property. Yeah, I guess it must have been about five or six hundred feet. And we captured an object that comes from upper screen right on TV. And it goes right up behind the jet and it seems to tag it on the tail or bump it. And you can see the object taken off away from the jet. A local they confirmed the sightings. Given the history of Roswell and the crash, we thought it was interesting that here is a man who is capturing something unexplained on videotape. So we went out and videotaped in the same place that he videotapes, and we got identical objects on our video. So we feel that he's not tricking us with, you know, any video scam or anything. What he has captured on tape, we feel is authentic. With over 500 hours of tape, Escamilla compiled the most complete record of rare daytime UFO sightings. Every time we get a new tape and we find some new kind of object in there, there's an excitement that builds and it's just like incredible. I've never seen anything like this in my life. From the film footage I have seen, there appears to be some type of intelligence behind the phenomena. They represent a true enigma deserving of scientific scrutiny. The Escamilla video is an excellent cross-section of the kinds of things that I see on videotapes. De La Toso analyzed the Escamilla tapes and discovered something very unusual. What we find, you'll see, is that the object comes right in front of this telephone pole and then moves right up here and over top of the wires and out of the frame. Now, in calculating this distance 
from where it comes in over the trees and by analyzing the edges and going up over the poles, it's about 900 yards. And in that period of time, it's moving well over 3,000 miles an hour. Midway is close to a number of military bases, including Area 51. The military may be using alien technology in their top secret aircraft. When it comes to trying to get this information, the Air Force will come back uh, on an initial generic request stating that they have no information. This is a lie. The proximity to uh, military bases in New Mexico and Escamilla making these videotapes uh, is not just a coincidence. It follows a pattern. Some believe Escamilla's sightings are military aircraft, while others think they're alien craft observing the Air Force. I'd like to find out what they are, period. If they're top secret military aircraft that the military is testing, uh, I want an answer why they're doing such dangerous things out there, like bumping their own jets. That's number one, but if they are not, okay, I'd like to know what they may be. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, a legendary astronaut goes after a massive fleet of unknown objects. Yes, they were flying quite high. How high, we couldn't tell because we couldn't get anywhere near their altitude. He divulges more UFO secrets. He looked out and his big saucer were sitting right off their wing. And we'll put it all together for you in our Unex Report with more fascinating evidence of unidentified flying objects coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Mysteries, UFO, Best Evidence. Gordon Cooper is an American hero, one of the Mercury 7, our first astronauts. He was the last American to travel into space alone. Before he became an astronaut, Cooper was an elite Air Force test pilot. That's when he witnessed an amazing sight a fleet of hundreds of UFOs. Yes, they were flying quite high. How high, we couldn't tell because we couldn't get anywhere near their altitude. Following standard procedure, Cooper filed a report. The official response puzzled him. They were probably high-flying seed pods, which didn't sound very logical. The military often claims that UFO sightings are simply weather balloons. I chased one one time in an airplane, and boy, it really looked like a big saucer very high, and I had an afterburner going and got as high as I get in this airplane. And as I started pulling up along close to it, I had a very shamefaced look on my face when I realized it was a big weather balloon with the radio package hanging under it. A few years later, at Edwards Air Force Base, Cooper had another UFO experience. This time, his camera crew actually filmed it. As they were sitting there filming, a little saucer came from, uh, I say little saucer, it was a saucer, came flying over their heads, put down three little landing gear and landed right out on the dry lake bed. And they picked up their cameras and started over toward it, filming as they went. And when they got in fairly close to it, it lifted up, put the gear back in the wheel wells, tipped up, and took off at a great rate of speed. I sent them over to develop the film and then had to go through the, all the proper regulations of reporting this. And, and we wound up having to send the film forward to Washington in the uh, base jet airplane. And uh, I don't know whether anyone's ever seen it since. The alien craft was strikingly similar to the ones he saw a few years before. And basically the same plan form vehicle. They were a double saucer, lenticular. But if you're going to be going in and out of atmospheres like Earth or other places might have, you certainly need a little more aerodynamic type of vehicle. And the saucer has the capability of going through the air at tremendous rates of speed and handling the bow and trailing wave without making shock waves. So it can be very silent while traveling at big rates of speed through the atmosphere. Cooper has yet another account. As a friend of mine, he was a captain on a major airline. Uh, at night, he was flying along, noticed this, suddenly a big glow came off his left wing, and he looked out and his big saucer was sitting right off their wing. 
And so he turned slightly toward and it moved away and turned back and it moved back in position. Turned to his co-pilot and said, uh, do you see what I see? And he said, oh, God, yeah, I do. And it trailed along with him for quite a period of time and tipped up and climbed very steeply away. Astronauts have reported several UFO sightings from space, but Cooper believes only one of them is true. To my knowledge, the only thing that was ever seen on any of our space flights, and believe me, all of us would like to have seen something, was on Jim McDivitt's Gemini 7 mission, where they saw um, this glint of something metallic off in the distance. And he reported, and nobody had it listed on the ground, so he tried getting a picture of it. But the sun, unfortunately, was glinting off of it. It was bright. All you got is just a glint. There was no detail on what it was but never any, uh, any further sightings all along. In a letter to the UN, Cooper laid out his opinion on UFOs. I, I would like to think that they're going to really release all the information. Cooper believes we are not alone. No, I've always felt that there are a lot of other planets that have life on. With all those numbers of potentially habitable planets out there, I think we're kind of vain to think that God would habitate only one of them. Coming up, on Unexplained Mysteries, it's the Onyx Report. We sum up all the evidence for you. The people who witnessed UFOs in their backyards, the infamous Roswell crash, and the military's subsequent cover-up, alleged autopsies of extraterrestrials, the shape-shifting object that hovered over an Air Force base, and more from an American hero's brush with alien craft. Stay tuned for the Onyx Report, here on Unexplained Mysteries. The Onyx Report, UFO, best evidence. Numerous eyewitnesses across North America have seen unidentified objects. It was a total feeling of awe and knowing that I was looking at something that I didn't know what it was. I think there's no doubt about the fact that it's the most dramatic thing and the most astounding thing, the most important thing that could happen here on Earth. You'll find out that that UFO was about 10 miles away, up to 25,000 feet. And the size works out to about 500 feet long and doing 14,000 miles an hour. I've seen a ship just coming down over the tree and going very closer to the flames. UFO reports date back to the incident at Roswell, where some say alien technology and alien creatures were recovered from a crash. He made statements to the effect that it was nothing of this world. It couldn't be bent, torn, cut, uh, pierced, <laughs> burned. When I first came up to the, the craft, the creatures were laying like this in a line, side by side. And there's the evidence from the airbase in Ohio. This is the sort of division that would have been appropriate to use for the investigation of UFO research. They had uh, 30 alien bodies underground at Wright-Patterson Field alone. My Uncle Jack had a top-secret security clearance uh, when he worked at Wright-Patterson. He said, we have the bodies from the crash. He said, we went down to the cold storage area. Where the military may have been conducting alien autopsies. The head was shaped basically like a human head, only it was small. One of the most interesting discoveries, I think, has to be the alleged alien jawbone that we uncovered. This was an alien jawbone. Some of the most compelling evidence comes from the military's own tapes of pilots chasing unknown objects. We have confirmed reports of uh, some unidentified flying objects here area. Objects so advanced, our fastest jets couldn't catch them. The way it rose, no way he could have caught it. The UFO that witnesses saw from Oregon to Nevada. 
bright light that lit up the entire sky. What really happened was we have a single event that took place over a space of about 16 minutes from the Eureka end of the sightings until it is seen to explode over Las Vegas. The numerous sightings at Nellis Air Force Base. It seemed to move in whichever direction it wanted to go whenever it wanted to, contrary to any aircraft that I've seen in the past. So the startling thing is it, it, it seems to change shape. The unique videotape catalog of rare daytime UFO sightings. And we captured an object that comes from upper screen right on TV. And it goes right up behind the jet and it seems to tag it on the tail or bump it. We went out and videotaped in the same place that he videotapes. And we got identical objects on our video. What he has captured on tape, we feel is authentic. And what may be the best evidence of all, eyewitness testimony from a totally credible source, former astronaut Gordon Cooper. It was a saucer came flying over their heads, put down three little landing gear and landed right out on the dry lake. Eyewitnesses, military transmissions, actual physical contact with alien beings. Could all of these reports be wrong? Or are they true? And do UFOs exist? For now, the answer behind the evidence must remain an unexplained mystery.